This film, Photographing Interiors Part 2, is all about post-producing the roars that I shot when we photographed the interior of the mill about a week or so ago. Now in that film we went through all the steps needed to think about the shoot itself, where to put the camera, apertures, shutter speeds, different exposures, composition, all that kind of stuff. Now we're going to look at how to turn the raw files that were shot into a usable image file, a JPEG or a TIFF. Now if you don't know what I'm talking about, click the link below this film to Photographing Interiors Part 1, go and watch that and come back here because then this will make sense to you. Now when we went to shoot that, it was an overcast day when we set off and I was delighted because those are the best conditions to photograph an interior using, in, using available light. But once we got there, got the camera set up, the clouds disappeared, the sun came out and we got a very nasty highlight on the bar which I was not at all happy about. The only way to deal with that would either be to leave it until later in the day when the sun had moved round and that highlight was no longer there and that would be my preferred option or to use studio lighting to bring the light level in the rest of the room up closer to the light level of those highlights. That isn't my preferred option for two reasons. One is it's an enormous amount of work and it is incredibly tricky to mimic available light using studio light. It can be done, but it would have been very, very difficult in those circumstances. Plus, these films are more about using available light because I just think it's much, much nicer to use whenever possible. So anyway, I've got our RAW files loaded up in my RAW, pro RAW processor. I use Adobe Lightroom. Now I'm not going to go into the intricacies of using Lightroom, but we will be introducing Lightroom in our photo editing films. So let's have a look at Lightroom and our image files that we've got in here. <clears throat> the first one we shot, this one, was at the available light exposure that the camera said was correct. And it was being a bit fooled by this highlight here, the other one here, and the light coming through the window, so it's a bit too dark. So we up the exposure a bit, we've got a bit more detail in the room, but the highlights are starting to go berserk. And when we brightened it again, the room looks lovely, but I think these highlights are just unpleasant. There is absolutely no data there at all. So the final image that I shot was this one, which is very dark indeed, and there will hopefully be a bit more data in these nasty bright highlights. So this is the one that we're gonna work on. The first thing I'm gonna do is to brighten it up. Now I've got all sorts of controls over here on the right as I scroll down you can see there are masses of things going on here that I can use to tweak my RAW files to get the very very best from the image that I shot before I send it off out. Now there is no substitute for a great original and these are not great originals so in a way this is a great tutorial about how you can rescue things and a good reason for shooting raw. The first thing I'm going to do is to use the exposure slider just to brighten it up so I've got some detail in the rest of the room. And I want to get the white balance somewhere near right. Now there are white things going on in here and I know they're white and so I didn't use my grey card. If I zoom in up the top here, you can see there's this little rail running around the top of the room. I know that that's white, but I also know that these little, I don't know, caps on these pots, they're white as well. And I'm going to use those for white balancing. So I go and pick up my white balance dropper over here, and all I have to do is put it on top of this little white thing. And when I click, it's going to, did you see the colours change there? It's told the computer this is white. So it corrects that to white, which will get rid of a colour cast, and the rest of the room is now pretty much the correct colour. Now I'm going to put our exposure back in the middle where it was, so I'm just going to click in there and type zero and enter. It's gone dark again, but there's a reason for that which you'll see in a moment. I don't want to brighten up the rest of the room using the exposure control. I'm going to use a different control available to me, and it's this one here, it's called Fill Light. As I increase the fill light, it's going to affect the dark areas of the picture, but it won't brighten up the highlights. And that's exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to take this up here. You can already see a huge difference. We're getting a bit of detail going on. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Now I might tweak that a bit more later. So that's where we are to begin with. We can see some detail going on. And here's that highlight which worried me so much and it still does. The next thing I want to do is to attack that. So let's come in a little bit closer. And I'm going to introduce you to another tool available if you're photographing in RAW. 
and that's this thing here called the recovery slider. What that will do is it will look up areas of burnt out highlight but there may still be some data there and by using the recovery tool I can pull back, I can rescue some of it. So let's have a look and see how it works. As I push the slider here off to the right, look at that straight away in that highlight area, can you see these window panes have reappeared. Let's take it off again. The shadows from the window panes have come back and there's a little bit of data going on here. There's something else casting a shadow too, which is much, much better. Now you don't want to put too much fill in there because it lowers the contrast of the rest of the image. So I'm just going to go as far as it starts to make a difference and then back off a bit. And I think it's about there. Good stuff. <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to do is pick up a brush. This tool here is the adjustment brush tool. When I click it, it gives me a lot of options for the brush. When I go over here, you can see my cursor has changed to two circles. The inner circle is the edge of the brush, and the outer circle is how far it feathers out to, how soft the brush is, if you like. But I can change the size of the brush, and I can change how much it feathers as well, if I wish. I want a bit of a feather on there, but I want a fairly small brush, because I want to work inside these areas here. I'm going to set an exposure of minus, well, let's start off with minus half a stop, so that's 0 0.5. There it is, just there. And I just want to, if I press the space bar, I get a hand and I can just move the picture around a bit. Let go and I'm back to my brush. And I'm just going to very carefully just paint in over these highlights. Now at the moment you possibly can't see anything happening. This is quite a subtle thing. And I'm going to adjust it. I'm going to change it a bit now. Let's take that down a bit more to about minus point, well, minus eight. And just sort of push in down here. There you go. I don't know if you can see, it's just making a bit of a difference. It's finding a little bit more detail that the recovery tool couldn't get hold of. I didn't do that very well. Control Z undo. I overlapped at the bottom there. So let's just push this bit back in again. Good. These shadows up here, you see, as I work my way around, I'm getting a little bit more detail. And these little flicks of something just help to bring that shadow back to life a bit. Look, there's just the faintest hint of grey going on there. And as I come over to the edge, it's making that shadow detail. We're just finding a little bit of something. Very, very careful. I don't want to overlap. I don't want to let my brush tool run onto this area. I'll get a nasty line. I've got a bit of a one there, but I'm going to leave it for the minute. Uh, just working my way around ever so carefully. There we go. We're just getting a tiny, tiny hint of detail back in. Now I'm filling in the larger areas. And I really hope you can see th th this kind of detail just slowly creeping back in behind my brush. I don't want to go any further than that. Now I want to make the brush much smaller. I'm going to take it down really quite tiny because I want to try and get in some of these little fiddly corners like this. Now it doesn't matter if you go over something you've already done because Lightroom won't change the exposure of those areas. And I'm not doing this very well. I don't know if you can see I've made two little dark areas on that bar of the window which I didn't want to do but I'm not going to undo it now because you'll have to sit and watch me do it. But you have to take a bit of time, a bit of care. There we go. And I just push in a little bit of detail, even though there's detail in that highlight, I just want to bring it down a little bit more. I'm going to feather it out a bit more. There we go. So it's not quite such a hard edge to the brush. There we are. Push that bit in there. I want to get right down into that corner so we'll make it even tinier. And look at that. Lovely doubly. Uh, I think I've been around the top there, so that's good, that's good, up there, I just want to have a little look in this corner here, and that little bit of highlight down there, there we go, we've just rescued a little bit more data in that corner. If you want to see where you've been, if you hover the cursor over that dot, you can see the areas that I've painted in, and there's, looking at that, it's quite useful, because I can see a few places that I have missed, and I am going to go over that bit in the middle there, let's get my brush a bit bigger because I would like to strengthen up this bar that runs down there. 
from the edge of the window pane because that's what's going to put a bit of life into the shadow. Instead of it just being a big empty white hole, you can at least see that it's sunlight coming through a window because of the edges of the window panes. Anything else I've missed? There's a bit coming down here. Let's just take this in here very, very carefully. All down that edge there. Good, 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 good. Another little look at it. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. Notice I'm not going over this area because if I went over this bit where there is detail already, it would make it very, very dark indeed. And that would just look horribly unnatural. If I zoom back out by pressing the space bar and clicking, I can see my highlight. Notice I didn't work on this bit down here. That's because there is already some detail there. I don't want to fiddle with that. That looks natural and it looks just right. So I'm going to leave it alone. But if I wanted to darken what I've just done, I can easily just pull that and you can see that kind of changing. Now that's obviously ridiculous and horrible. Let's just take it back up a bit until it starts to look fairly natural. I think maybe minus 0.9 is about right. That's pretty good. Let's just click on the brush tool and there we go. We can see the image. <clears throat> We're getting there. We're winning. Next I'm going to brighten up the overall exposure a bit, keeping a close eye on that highlight because I don't want that to completely burn away and burn away again but I do want to make sure we've still got good exposure in the room. It's a little bit lacking in contrast so here we have a thing called a black slider. I just want to make the blacks a hint blacker. It's currently on five. I'm going to click in there and just change that to eight. I don't know if you saw that happen it's quite a subtle change but <clears throat> it's just made the blacks just a hint blacker. I now want to just put a, I'm going to put a hint more fill light in there. It's only a tiny bit. I'm not even sure if the video is picking this up, but that's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to put a little tiddly bit more contrast in there, but all the time watching that nasty highlight because I don't want to blow it away. I think that's quite good. We've got window panes. So another look at my highlight by clicking on the brush, clicking on the little dot there. I might put it down a bit more. Yeah, uh, that's too much. I'm going to there. That's great. So now I go on to minus 1.1 and I've got a bit of highlight detail in there. Behind the bar I think is a little bit dark. So I'm going to brighten it up. Again, I'm going to use the brush tool. I'm just going to put in, oh, it's going half a stop. 0.5 I want. Oh, it's tricky. It's much easier just to click in it and type a five. Trust me. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I should have done 0.5. Oh, look, I've got it. Brilliant. I want my brush a bit bigger because the area I'm going to work in is here. I want a good feather on it. And I'm just going to very carefully just work over that little bit there and just down behind the bar. I think that's probably pretty good. As you can see, if I do... You, right, it looks like someone's turned a torch on, doesn't it? It looks ridiculous. Let's just take that back. I want it to look natural, I think about 0 0.7, 0 0.8, I think that's good. And lift the contrast a tiny bit because when you brighten things you quite often lose contrast. So I'm going to go a little bit more and switch the brush off. Good, I think we are pretty much there with that. I think that's quite nicely rescued. I might give it a hint more contrast. Yep, I think that's plenty, 50 contrast. Saturation. I'm going to give it a tiny bit more colour because in using the fill light we've lost a little bit of the available colour. That's good. 24, that's nice. Excellent. We've rescued that image. Now because you've watched me do that a step at a time, a little tiny bit, I made a copy of that raw file before we began so I can show you. We have gone from that, as it loads in, there we go, to that and we've still got those highlights there. Right, so the next step, right click, export. Export the raw file out as a JPEG. It's gonna to say to me, where do you wanna save it? What do you wanna do with it? So I'm gonna just choose here, make sure in the right place, interiors part one. It should be in part two, shouldn't it? Sorry. Part one A, post-production, negs. This is just my workflow, good, and export. Little status bar will come up in the corner here of Lightroom as it beavers away to create. There we go, it's done it. 
fabulous. So the next thing, let's get Lightroom out of the way, and I've got Photoshop going on in the background. Photoshop is a great place to do your polishing and check. Lightroom's pretty good, but the preview in Lightroom, you're still not looking at a real image file. You are looking at an interpretation of the data in the raw file, and it's pretty close, but I always find the best place to go to really check things is in Photoshop. So let's open up that file we've just created as a JPEG put it on screen. Look, I think that looks very acceptable. I'm going to check the levels because that's just something I always do. And looking at that, I can see that my histogram says that even in the shadow areas, there's some detail. We've got loads of mid-tones going on and there's a little bit of a clip there, which are the highlights. So we've rescued an awful lot of data. I might just ease that slider just to have a look off to the right. No, it makes it too dark. I think that's fine. I'm going to cancel and leave that well alone. But what I want to show you, if I can find it, is I exported, here we go, just the shot which I took at a brighter exposure. Now let's have a little look side by side. Look at the difference in the bar. You see, this is just a big horrible hole of white which looks absolutely dreadful whereas in the post produced version we've got a little bit of data going on down here. Now, as I say I would have preferred to shoot this at a different time of day when we didn't have the highlight but some would say that that highlight looks completely natural and that's how it should be. So there we go this is the second stage in shooting interiors or indeed anything else you take the shot and then you do your post-production. Before Lightroom existed, I would have had the lab do it. They would have dodged and burnt, done a little bit of work in the final print before the print was scanned and sent off. But there we go. Part two of photographing interiors. Post-production, done.